Hello again, and welcome to another episode of Mang's Vance Wars. Finally, after what feels like forever, I am playing Mang's Vance Wars again. Uh, there's a reason for that, but I would like to get into the next map straight away, so here we go. Eggside Down, the map in which we face off against the Mang's self-insert CO, which is technically not a self-insert, because someone else created it log, and then it was voted in by the community. So there you go, it's a someone else's insertion of somebody else into the game. Yeah. Uh, both of the maps that I am going to play today are cartel maps, so this should be very interesting. Cartel maps tend to be much more difficult than anything I create, so uh, you can look forward to that. Let's begin by looking at the enemy CO, Itlog. Obviously based on Mangs himself, he's bald, and he has what appears to be a devil axe at his side. So does that make him a deviled egg? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the idea with Itlog is that units with 6 or more HP have better attack and lower defense, but when you crack the egg, they gain higher defense and less attack. That seems a little bit off, but the idea is that units at low health will be harder to finish off, so don't expect it to shot his infantry on a city. His regular power will amplify these effects, as you see on the screen right now, and his superpower is a Meteor Strike, same targeting as Storm's Meteor Strike, however this one only does 5 HP of damage, and his stats will return to normal for the turn. So there you go. Also, the Meteor graphic has been changed and it's very silly, so uh, look forward to that. We're bound to see at least one Meteor in this match. Oh, I need to look at the time limit too. So you can see that there's a port in the center of this egg-shaped island. Uh, let's hope he doesn't build anything out of it, because what would he build, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to capture this base straight away. The time limit for this map is 18 turns. Should be able to handle that. Let's get... I'm going to get tanks mostly at the start here, because I need to take over these two bases first and foremost. Very easy to take them. And interestingly, the infantry that come out of those bases will always go for the cities in the center first. That's actually going to be important later. So now that I'm going to capture this base and this city. And if I attack from here, I should be able to actually destroy the infantry. So, unless I misclick. Well, you know what? It's probably, it's probably going to be alright. Um, I'll just make two more tanks. Wow, what a time to misclick. I don't think that'll affect things too much, though, because uh, the infantry actually does go up to six health, so it's not getting a defense boost. And yes, he just built a battleship. Cartel made it so that the AI always builds a battleship in the center of the map on turn three. And hey, these bases were left unoccupied, so I can just take them straight away. And these infantry will actually be frozen by the enemy freeze glitch, so I'm actually going to leave them there. I'm going to stop the capture on the sides here. You definitely want to protect the sides because there are silos, and those silos are actually going to be important. Like, they're basically the way you uh, deal with a battleship, is to use silos, because you can't really attack it with anything without getting blown apart yourself. So silos are the way to go there. And I'm also going to need lots and lots of artillery. Oh, don't forget to finish the capture there. That would be even more embarrassing. So just in case I haven't mentioned it yet, because I can't really tell if I'm repeating myself anymore these days, uh, the reason it took forever for this video to come out is that both of the maps that I'm going to play, uh, they definitely threw me for a loop. They're much more difficult than you might expect if you don't know what you're doing. And in the second map that I'm going to play especially, uh, I just struggled with that for a very long time until I did some thinking outside the box. And I did find a strategy in the end. So, look forward to that when I get to it. Also, um, there's probably a pun to be made about bunnies and boxes considering Lily is a magician, but I can't really think of one at the moment, I'm too focused. So I'm basically going to be making a line of artillery over here. There are going to be some very tough tanks coming out later. And I should really be making APCs as well, because they'll be important too. I am playing a transporter-themed CO. 
Should I go up here? Yeah, I'll go there. Oh, I had a base that I could have built from, but what could I have built? Infantry? I got enough of those, I think. So yes, medium tank coming our way, and by leaving the infantry on the cities alive, they'll just be sitting there because they're frozen by the glitch. So the medium tank is just going to walk up to them and then get blown up by artillery. If, I, uh, if I'm able to actually hit it, it depends on what side the medium tank goes to. Actually, it might go in the center. In fact, it probably will go in the center. That's the that's the closest tile to me that it has. Alright, I'll keep an infantry there, just so I can launch the silo whenever. And more artillery! We're just gonna be spamming artillery. And he's losing money every time those infantry also repair. Not a lot of money, but... Oh, the tank is actually... Well, in that position, if I fire with the artillery, I can't build anything. And he's got a second medium tank, so this just got... Uh, more interesting. I don't know if I've... Well, I must I must be doing something... Oh, wait, the infantry actually moved off because they're, they're no longer frozen by the glitch. Silly me. Well, that's not a problem. I can just freeze the medium tank itself. That's probably for the best anyways. Because I would like him to spam more infantry. Now I'm going to move off instead of actually firing at the medium tank. Okay, time to capture this base. And you do get quite a lot of money in this map, so... I guess that's in case you want to build something out of the ports that you're allowed to capture for some reason. I don't really know why anyone would build anything there. The only the only good unit you could build is a lander, because nothing else can get through the shoals. I don't think we made it so that sea units can go through shoals. That doesn't seem like something uh, Mangs would want for this, because... We, we had a specific scope in mind. Only the COs are supposed to be custom. Aside from Cartel's custom tile set, only the COs are customized in any way. We did not alter the units. I guess by some technicality, some units might have been altered in order to accommodate CO abilities, but whatever. Alright, interesting spot for the artillery, because now it's covering my base. Right. Time to get rid of the recon, and I need some more units over here, I think. Um I will I'll just drop here. It's probably for the best. Now time to destroy one of his medium tanks. Although yeah, you know, I'm actually gonna leave it on one health. That's actually really good. Because that'll force him into repair mode. And while he's in repair mode, he might, like, base block. That is something I've seen the, the enemy do. I'm just gonna let the artillery take a hit, actually. Just lure in the medium tank. That one I will blow up. Get these units out of the way. And I might think about building some big units of my own, because on previous attempts, um, lacking in big units like medium tanks has actually hurt me, so I'm actually going to build one of those. Although I have less APCs than I normally would. Although he is getting close to his super now, so I might want to... Oh, he just joined. That's interesting that he did that. Sometimes I forget that the AI is capable of joining. They do do it on occasion. Okay, I think now is the time to fire off the silos. He hasn't built a... Well, he did build a medium tank like he thought he would. He has not built a... Neo tank yet. Because I have had him build a Neo tank. 
So what to do here? I think first I'm gonna... Well, it was a mistake to move that APC, actually. Now I can't use my regular CO power when I get it to build a, a mech in the APC. But I will fire off the silos, as I mentioned. And these units are in a very good position. I'm going to use three on the battleship, and then one can go to the medium tank and its surrounding units. And now I don't need to worry about guarding the silos anymore, because they've already been used. So, the battleship is going to have 3 HP, but you literally don't have to worry about it at all. That is such little health. One thing you could do is that you could capture these two properties. That would cause the battleship to not attack anything but the capturing infantry, as is the case for uh, the AI, as usual. It's a rule for them to always attack capturing infantry if they can. And as for the units over here, uh, not much to worry about, so I'm going to start capturing. These guys might be concerning, because there is the um, there is the chance that they blow up the infantry, but I don't think that'll happen, because now they have an attack uh, penalty for being below 5 health. Does it look have his... No, he does not have his meteor yet. And I forget how his AI works. Well, it, it should work like... It should look... It should work like any other CO, basically. So, I think I'm safe. I'm gonna set up for my regular power on the next turn. So, APCs. And, I guess, uh... Tank and another APC. And then I need to set up for potentially distracting the Meteor. I don't really know if I need to do anything special about it. It's only 5 health instead of 8, so it's not as, um, it's not as devastating. Now make any joke you want about that particular recon. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, you can't say that this is the finale, it's only like turn 10 or something. Yeah, I kind of wish there were quotes specifically for supers, but we we don't exactly have that capability at the moment. It is turn 10, like I said. So, I can't even finish this capture, that's a teensy bit annoying. Okay, time to get the APCs moving, and just have them build a bunch of mechs for me. This is such a great power, I love... I love that I was able to create it. Alright. Clear past these, and then... We're basically going to be attacking the HQ from all sides. And if I do this... Now, I'm actually going to wait for the Meteor to come down, because the Meteor will remove... All of his, um, all of his day-to-day -day buffs, so this battleship being so low means it's gonna have a big defense boost. But not if he's on his CO power. And can I block his bases, actually? I would like to do that. Now, I don't think I can block them both, so I'm just going to situate my artillery in range of the battleship. And do this, too. And I don't really have... I don't really have the brain power to calculate where the Meteor is going to land. So, I'm just gonna build a bunch of expensive units and hope that distracts him. Cap this while I'm at it. Get a medium tank down here. Let's hope it's a money Meteor. Alright, here we go. And this custom Meteor graphic, by the way, it's also by Cartal. It's been seen in a couple of videos already. Might as well add it into this. <laughs> Winging it is what I do all the time, so... 
hard boiled. Oh, that was not exactly where I wanted it to land, but it is only 5 health, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And there you go, as you see, the battleship was uh, aiming at the capturing infantry. So I can think of a lot of worse things that could have happened there. I should be able to at least ship him down. Yeah, I can't get rid of him fully, it seems. So I'll have to deal with a 3 HP battleship on the next turn. I do need to join up a bunch of units now, though. But I do have a bunch of loaded mechs that can do something the instant they drop, so that's pretty cool, too. Finally captured this thing. What a resilient base. And this one, too. Seriously, I don't know what these ports are supposed to do for the player. I don't really see them being helpful at all. Uh, not, not many places this APC can go, so... Drop here and, I guess, capture this. As for over here... Time to make full use of Lily's abilities. Drop here. Drop here, too. Now, she doesn't have a damage bonus on mechs, so this might be a teensy bit annoying. What should I hit this with? The tank or the mech? Oh, both are about the same. Okay. They do still get the usual plus 10 defense for activating your CO power. That's something that is there for every CO. Okay, that's everybody. I guess I'm gonna need some backup artilleries, because a bunch of them just got meteored. They got egg on their faces! <laughs> Okay, this is looking good so far. I need to check on my technique score, it's probably dropping. Oh, or I could just build even more units with my power. Uh, okay, technique is actually perfect right now. Alright, I'm gonna mop up the rest of these units. Let's see if I can clear a path for the medium tank to maybe destroy the battleship. Oh, jeez. Not with that Not with that kind of number. Um, I can at least start capturing the base. This battleship is very resilient, as you can see. I should have destroyed it sooner. And actually, what, what am I doing? I need to activate this right now. Time to build even more mechs! Although, actually, I moved the APC on the left. Yeah, that was a bit of a mistake. Alright, do I blow this thing up? No, probably not. Um, I need to block this, I think. Yeah. That city is also very resilient. You know, actually, I just realized... Lily might actually be really overpowered in PvP because of that mech-building ability. Because you can get units from sources other than your bases that way. But you do have to invest in an APC to actually do it.
Alright, this isn't going as smooth as I wanted it to, but I think I'm okay for the time being. Oh, that tank hurts. Full HP tank hurts. Yeah, now he's getting into the... He's getting into the mech spamming phase that the AIs always get into. Battleship is really starting to annoy me. Alright, a 6 health battleship, I think I can deal with that. Because he won't have the defense boost at, um, at 6 health. Here and here and... Fire at that. Join. I'm pretty sure I got this. And let's not forget that I have a bunch of units that can move the instant they are dropped. So go ahead and do that. I'll get this out of the way and join these two up. Yeah, I should have him run over in just a couple of turns. And now I can actually make Neo Tanks, so I think I will do that. Yeah, the cleanup is always, like, the longest part, I'd say. Do I still have a capturing infantry to... Yeah, I do. I'm surprised this infantry did absolutely nothing and probably thought attacking the mech was a bad engagement. Okay, that's the end of the battleship. I don't have to deal with it anymore. And now we just commence running over everything. And I have my regular power again. I'm gonna make some more mechs. That probably sounds like a good idea. I could route them, probably. I wonder if I could do that. Uh, yeah, regular power it is. Okay, first gotta get this APC to safety. There is a little bit of risk in doing this with, like, a 1 HP APC because, as you know, when you lose a unit with a transporting unit inside of it, it counts as two units lost. Okay, I better do this. So mechs are not fun to fight when there's, like, a flood of them. I've almost got that base captured. It's gonna happen eventually, don't you worry. At this point, I don't even know what the units in the back are doing. I'm just gonna make a Neo Tank every day. And a good thing, too, because here comes another meteor. I forgot that another meteor might come up. Uh, maybe go for the. Wow, we picked the worst position to go for. Okay, this is not good. This is really not good. Biggest mistake of the match. Um, I'm not completely lost yet, but that was pretty awful. He doesn't have any buffs now, so I can at least work with that. Ok, 
Okay, this space is secure now. And... Just, I'll just blow up this unit while I'm at it. And yeah, I, I think I'm pretty I, I think I'm pretty good at this point. I don't even need to capture anything. I'll capture that though. I want to distract them a little, because they'll be forced to attack the mech. Do a little extra damage with this. No. Uh, just leave it there. Jeez, that meteor still does a number on you, even if it is only five health. Just get me some more Neo tanks. <laughs> Okay, this is fine. Okay, that's fine. I didn't lose any units at all on that turn. Alright, I think I should be able to finish this right here. Uh, do that. And... Do this. Nope, just barely not enough. Okay, I can do that. I want to get rid of the mech first. I can just join all of these up. That's pretty funny. And at this point, he is pretty much lost. Yeah, there's nothing that can be done now. Alright, let's see if I can salvage my tech score just a little bit. And uh, actually build those Navy units I said were never going to get built. I'm only going for an S rank and not a perfect 300, so... I think I'm good at this point. 17 days, and, uh, 10 units lost out of 66. And I could spam some more units, but I... Oh, whoops. Sub. I did not mean to build a sub. Well, at least you can say you built a sub in Eggside Down. You can say someone built it, rather. Okay, good. 297. That's an S rank. That was, um, that is a pretty good map, but sometimes the cleanup can take a little while, especially if you don't destroy the battleship early, like I should have. But, that's an S rank, and, uh, next time we will take on what is probably Cartel's hardest map in this package, so look forward to that. Alright, it's time for the second map of this video, and the final map of this playthrough for the time being. Uh, there are other maps past this, however they are not fine-tuned and tested for balance as much as the first 10 maps were, so for my playthrough, I'm only going to be playing through the first 10 maps for the time being, but in the future, when we release another version with more maps, I will definitely be playing through those as well. So let's get into Missile Swamps. It's another cartel map, which means it's going to be very difficult. So much so, in fact, that it stumped me for the longest time. And I will admit that part of the difficulty is because... I force myself to play as Lily in every one of these maps, and Lily is not the best CO for this map. You probably want somebody with a power boost of some kind, like Itlog or Pyre, but with Lily you can actually take this base very, very early in the game, and that is helpful. However, getting through this area right here is very difficult. Misaru, the enemy CO, is a very defensive CO, and she likes to set up indirect defenses here, so it's very tough to push through all of this when you can't see anything. And there's not a lot of force for you to hide in, either. Also, Misaru gets these two missile silos. 
I don't think they contribute much to the play of the map. You can't really stop her from getting them. And you'll see that there's a way to distract the silos so they aren't that big of an issue, but it still feels kind of weird that you're basically forced to have to do that. Miss Sire's theme song is actually written by me. It is a remix of uh, Nitori's theme from Toho 10. So we got another Toho theme in there. I chose that theme in particular because I think uh, Nitori and Misaru have a lot of similarities, but unless you actually know Toho's characters, you probably have no idea why that even is. And I could go into detail, but let's stick to the gameplay. I need to show off Misaru's stats. So, she has more attack and also defense on her anti-airs, missiles, and cruisers. The defense in particular is very annoying because she will build many anti-airs in this map. Her missiles also have one extra attack range, and her air units have minus one move, which can be important. I've seen her build fighters and B-copters in this map. And, um, oh, I didn't look at her powers yet. I'll just explain what they do. The regular power gives indirects more defense and makes missiles move two spaces more. And the superpower, the superpower will give all of her units extra defense if they are sitting next to an indirect unit. A very interesting idea for a CO power that I think I had to come up with myself because, um, the original creator of the CO created a power that I was not comfortable coding, so... I had to come up with that on my own, and it, unfortunately, it's not even it's not even programmed perfectly. I've seen units get the boost when they shouldn't, so that's something I have to look into in the future. There's the first silo. I really have no idea how the targeting on these things works. Normally, it goes after where it can do the most money damage, so of course it hit the T-copter, but I've seen it sometimes go after these two infantry here. And that doesn't really do a lot of money damage. It does mess with your funding a little bit, but that's not really a big deal. So I got no idea what's going on there. So I'm just going to be moving towards this airport. This airport is going to be important, so I like to capture it as soon as possible. The gist of this strategy is I'm going to be using the T-copters and Lily's ability to build units in them when her CO power is up. So that's going to be important. And, um, I need to take a unit up to this silo as well. I think I'm just gonna... Should I capture instead? Yeah, I better just capture. I can take the silo whenever I want. So, put this here. And I need to arrange the T-copters in such a way that nothing else can get hit by them. So I think if I move in this manner, it should be fine. Because I'm gonna get a, um... Well, I was going to get an anti-air, but actually, now that I have to... Yeah, let's let's get it up here. I was going to get it down here, but that could potentially cause the silo to come down here instead. Instead of going for the two T-copters. Yeah, the silo went for the T-copters. That's good. So now what I need to do is I need to find the enemy's... Um, I need to find the enemy's anti-air unit, because sometimes it can get into this area and start messing with you. In the meantime, this anti-air is built so that I can fend off a B-copter that always comes down here. And I will drop this here, and I need to drop up here as well. Oh, so there's an enemy recon there. That's normal. I've seen that plenty of times. I'm going to make a tank in order to fend it off. And I should probably be saving a little money as well, because I need to start making B-copters of my own. Oh, there's the enemy anti-air. Okay. So... I think I'm going to actually do something... Hmm. Well, I want, I want to get rid of these units. The anti-air is probably, like, the most annoying unit to deal with, so I think I'm gonna... This silo... I don't really put this silo anywhere important. Like, normally I just fire it off into the darkness and hope I hit something. Magic missile at the darkness. Okay, let's see if this helps out. Because knocking the anti-air into repair mode is actually a pretty good plan. So this second silo can go... The tank was here, wasn't it? 
yeah, I'll weaken the tank, and maybe I'll hit something else as well. Doesn't really matter if I hit anything in that area. So with that out of the way, now it's time to worry about... I'm gonna put this here to block the area. Now it's time to start building the Air Force. That's what I need to do. All my other units can start moving forward. I'm gonna need more T-Copters as well. I don't think there's any danger of losing a unit. I definitely don't want to lose a unit this early. But I might lose that infantry. There's nothing I can really do about that, unless I can successfully sneak out of there. So yeah, the idea, if you couldn't tell, is going to be to sneak through this area and capture the HQ, because the enemies are going to be all focused all over this area instead of anywhere like near the HQ, which would be important. Get that out of the way. This strategy can result in perfect technique and definitely perfect speed, but power is a concern. Because you have to destroy a lot of units in one turn, I've noticed. If I play like that, it should be fine. 10% of the enemy units need to be downed in one turn in order to give you the perfect power score. So I think four or f even five units. That was weird. Oh, that tank must have started at seven health, which is why it got knocked down to four. I think that makes the most amount of sense. Okay, first things first, get rid of you. And this is probably where you want to take care of your power score, actually. So... Let's hope I don't get ambushed or anything. I'm going to... A bit risky, but I'm going to drop here. Just to see if there's a unit in the forest. And there was not. So we move forward. And can I get rid of this right here? Yeah, I can. Perfect. So, power score looking pretty good. How many did I get rid of? Like, five. No, four. I, I got rid of one on the last turn. So, that's a pretty good sign. It's a really great start. I think four units should do it. Now, let's see if they discover that infantry. They probably will. They're gonna run into it at some point. And you saw very briefly there was a rocket there, so I wasn't kidding when I said Misaru likes to build lots of indirects. So this is looking pretty good so far. There's going to be a second mech. Yeah, I just played this so many times that I know what the enemy composition is going to be like. And I don't know where the missile is, so just in case, let's... um. Let's do... I'm gonna put the infantry here, because I don't want the tank to get hit. Keep moving, and the copters are safe in this area. Oh, I should hide this thing in the forest too. They just haven't seen that infantry yet. It's actually being very effective as a spy, because I can see all of the enemy units. And it can't be spotted. Oh, it just got spotted, actually. But it that sure is a lot of indirects, so... It hasn't actually been destroyed yet. It will be on the next turn, though, don't worry. Okay, you go around. And I could make a bit of a... Oh, never mind. It's left at one health, so I don't want to move in with these units quite yet. I'm going to play like... Um, I am going to need some vision in there, eventually. So I'll play like this for the time being. Oh, I actually have the power now, so what I'm going to do is... I think I'll keep everything as it is for now, but this is going to be a T-Copter instead. 
and then on the next turn, the T-Copters are gonna go into this corner and then build their units. And then I need to get all of my units out of that area, because they're gonna get blown up eventually. Misaru has her super, but it's not really gonna amount to much. I don't plan on attacking anything that would have an indirect nearby. There really has to be a way to restrict that quote to being said only for the super, but I don't really know a way to do that. Okay, go over here. That was a bit risky, because I don't have vision on the area. Okay, uh... And now I can get a little bit of vision. That's a lot of anti-airs. I wasn't really expecting that, but I don't think they can... This one has been in repair mode for a while. I don't know what the other one is going to do. Because if it senses that it can get down here and start hitting things, that would not be good. I need vision on what she builds, though. So I'm gonna get... I'm also gonna get a fighter here. Maybe an odd choice, but there might be an enemy air unit in there, and that's probably the biggest threat to me. So we'll see where the anti-air decides to move. I might have to spend a turn outright destroying it. Which, if it's, if it's getting a defense boost of some kind, that would not be good. Okay, didn't want to lose that. Oh, there's an anti-air there. I guess the fighter was not such a great choice of a unit. <laughs> okay, I don't see where it went, so maybe it's not anywhere important. Okay. What can I see in this area? Well, time to take a bit of a risk. Okay, there's nothing in the woods. So I can drop... I want to I wanna get... Um, anything in here? No. Nothing in, uh, nothing in the woods. So, um... Yeah, all of my units are just hiding, by the way. <laughs> Wait, I guess I'll get a little closer. This will let me see what's on the base. And... I want to see what's on the base. I want to see what's on the HQ. Yeah, I, I really should just be jumping in there, like, straight away. Okay. I'll start capping. So that might distract the enemy. This is going to start capping this. And I think I have just won. They would have to have some way of damaging this mech. And they might have something, but the only thing that's really in range is the anti-air. And ha it has to spend a turn attacking the defending T-Copter anyways. Okay. So technique is not perfect, but I think I'm okay. Power is definitely going to be alright. So as long as you take care of power while you're taking those cities at the bottom, everything's fine. Okay, they had a shot at stopping me, but I think I've just won now. Yeah, if the AI had played perfectly, then it would have had a shot. It could have it hit me now, but I don't think there's any units left to do that. Whew, okay. So you can see why using that strategy is very tense. So, I'm gonna build. I don't know if this has any actual impact on my score. I only built, like, four units. Power is good. Speed is good. This is actually the fastest clear of the map I've gotten. So that ought to do it. I don't think I can get a better, better power score. And there it is, an S rank on Missile Swamps. I finally found a way to do it. Uh, kind of a cheap way to do it, I know, but that's fine. 
All right, so that's gonna do it for the first 10 maps of Meng's Vance Wars. I'm so glad I finally got to uh, finish that out. It's been on my to-do list forever. So, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying Meng's Vance Wars. I've certainly enjoyed playing it. I certainly enjoyed making it too. So, I'll give out some shout outs and thank yous. Thank you, Katita Sexy, for working on this and creating the art for Lily. That was very impressive. I love it so much. Uh, thank you, Hilgarm, for your work on the art as well. Wild Matsu, you did amazing on the music, way better than mine. And um, there were a couple testers in the little group chat for this as well. Uh, Hanako was there. I, I can't remember all the other names. I'm so sorry. Uh, but one name I can remember is Manx. Thank you so much for allowing me to work on this, Manx. And thank you so much for hosting that CO contest and uh, arranging all of this ROM hack work to come together. It's been a fantastic project to work on, and I certainly hope we update it soon. I know there's a lot of other stuff happening, because a, a new Fire Emblem just got announced for one thing, so that'll be interesting. But yeah, thank you guys for watching all of my videos, and I hope you continue watching all of my videos in the future. Thanks everybody, I'll see you for whatever video I decide to make next. Later!